Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Dante, and where's the buzz? And today we have on my block actor Julio Macias. I'm so excited to have you here. How are you? Chilling. How are you doing? Good. So my first question for you is, what do you think has happened within this two-year gap that they showed at the end of season three? Because when I look at Spooky, you're a completely different man two years later. So yeah. what do you think hypothetically happened? Uh, you know, we grew up, uh, everybody grew up, everybody kind of, you know, uh, I, I, we didn't know if there was going to be a, a fourth season. So I, I like the idea of the third season ending, how a lot of our, you know, friendships, be it middle school, high school, college work, they just kind of taper off, you know, like these are your homies for life, but life is only like, you know, two or three years at a time. Right. And uh, and so, yeah, you know, after after everything went down with Cuchillos, I think everyone had their moment of what am I doing and what am I going to be doing for the rest of my life? And that's where we pick up two years later, seeing those decisions unfold. Uh, and yeah, Oscar definitely definitely goes through some changes. Yeah. And I feel like you and Caesar always had somewhat of like a hot and cold relationship. And even at the end of season three, you see that you're completely uh, away from that lifestyle with the Santos, but Caesar isn't. So what do you think led Caesar to that point? Uh, protection, security, you know, uh, Caesar's exactly where Oscar wanted him to be. Uh, and then when he got there, I think Oscar was like, damn, I don't know if it, this is exactly what I wanted for him. You know, he, um, he showed him that secu- that he could have security, safety and, 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 and wellness in his community. If he joined a group like Los Santos, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, when he finally got there, obviously Caesar's going to find, or going to go find comfort in that community, you know? Um, and at that point, it, there's almost nothing that, you know, Oscar can tell him because, you know, it's like you've been spoon, uh, spoon feeding me this this narrative for years and years and years and years. And now I'm just supposed to take your word off of it from like two nights so that suddenly it's not worth it. Like, nah. <laughs> wow. What a great perception. Hold on one second. Dina White just came in. Hi, Dina. Are you on? I am. Thank you. No problem. I'm just going to restart again. Okay. And what do you hope that the fans will take away from season four? Because I know it's going to be a lot and I'm ready for the tissues. What do you hope they will take away from this season? Uh, You know, that life is complicated, but it's also beautiful. And, you know, we got to embrace the people around us and embrace those decisions and understand that some, some decisions come with consequences, but you know, once you pay those consequences to, to keep moving forward. Um, and I think that that's what season four is all about, is about, you know, taking ownership of, of your life and, and, and moving forward. Mm-hmm. And Spooky, you know, like I said, you see at the end of season three that he gets, he gets a chance of change. He gets like a new start. Um, what do you think that he will do with this new start? Do you think that there may be a, a time where he may actually go back to the Santos? Um. Yeah, I, I think that there's there's this expression of like, you know, once you're in, you're in for life. And that can mean many different things. You know, you can be in and affiliated for life. You know, that just means that you phased out of necessarily doing the grunt work or, or being in the front lines. But um, in a very strange way, these these people are still your families. And, you know, you see it when you when you get older, the, the, the people that are holding it down, the you know, violence is going to, is going to permeate that world no matter what, but you kind of do see, uh, you hope to see that younger generation looking up at, at the old veteranos that are, you know, just chilling and kind of holding in a way, in this weird sort of way, holding the peace. I'm not saying that this is the way to do it, but (laughs) in that, you know, they, they are saying, Hey, um, we were fighting each other for the same cause. The cause was that we were being in our minds and their minds oppressed by society as a whole. So we're going to be stronger together than apart. So there's always going to be that sense of loyalty. Do I think that he's going to go back and like, you know, gangbang? I don't know, but mm-hmm. I think he still has, I think he's got one foot in one foot out. 
Right. And that could be dangerous in itself. Uh, yeah. How did you tap into the character of Spooky? You know, him being a whole Santos leader and someone who's on my, like on the streets. So how did you tap into that character? Yeah. Um, the only authentic, uh, authenticity that I could bring to him was, you know, my Mexican American background. Um, aside of that, aside from that, we have plenty of differences. So what I had to do or what I, I like to do is um, inform myself, uh, read, interview, talk to people um, who might be in the, in the life or affiliated and, and kind of get an understanding about uh, what drives a person to make those decisions without any kind of judgment? You know, um, how did the, uh, how did the, how did the, the border changing, uh, from, uh, a, cause realistically California was almost separate from Mexico, even before it became part of the United States, you know, we were considered Californianos. And so, uh, you know, what happens with, with the, with that Mexican identity, once it does become the United States and suddenly we're no longer citizens, and then how do, you know, the people that grew up in, in that lifestyle, and then, you know, how do we go from the zoot suit riots all the way till today and how, how it's always been a sense of protecting the community and how that gets perverted and, and, and twisted into something dangerous and violent, but at the same time has a root in, in a, uh, a historical struggle for representation in a way. So for me, that's what I, that's what I think uh, or at, that, at least that's what I try to portray that, that portray that that spooky uh, holds down. He tries to hold that that um, historical heritage down, and he's got a nasty way of doing it. Yeah, I I I love him though. I think he has a lot of heart. <laughs> <in him. laughs> I really do. And uh, my last question for you is: What is one on my block memory that you will take home with you forever? Who uh, there's a bunch, but I mean, one that always comes back is uh, me and Brett shooting that graveyard scene, man, it was, it was cold, but you know, me and Brett are like, you know, we're homies. And so it was a lot of fun being on set, you know, laughing together and then just kind of being like, we should be praying right now and just kind of like apologize. Like we were in, we were, I was in the hole and he was in the hole and we were like, look to the left and look to the right. Like, Yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll be, we'll be out of here real quick. Because we were actually in a graveyard. Um, and, you know, hearing coyotes in the background and then our showrunner's like, oh, look at them. They're so cute. We're like, Lori, get back here. They're coyotes. Come they on. will eat you. I mean, they were like baby coyotes, but still, like, you don't want to be messing around with that. I absolutely love that response. Oh, my gosh. I would love to be a fly on the wall with that set because that cast <laughs> is amazing. You guys are all really funny. Um, congratulations. I can't wait to see what's next for you. Um, a big fan of your work. I loved you on Selena, too. So I can't wait to see where else I see you. Have a great day. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be the same. Wow. 